even a season of pass. It's a season of purpose. Even in solitude, he magnified his sovereignty. But this 2023, we will gather as one man. It's time to dream again, to dive into the unknown with faith, to explore the depths of his power, to cross the unbelief, and swiftly move forward, to reach the unseen and witness the fullness of his glory. We are going further. Guys, Merry Christmas! At alam nyo ba, 21 days na lang, Pasko na! Alam nyo guys, we're so excited to have you here with us today. It's another Sunday to expect a great encounter with the Lord. And guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Alam nyo guys, we want you to feel at home lang. So sit back, relax, and enjoy every moment with the Lord and our COD fam. Before we dive into our worship experience, we are sharing to you what's happening in our church. First off, this whole month of December, Revival Night will be on Christmas break. So take note guys, ha? we won't be having Tuesday worship services starting December 6, but we will resume on January 3, 2023. Together, let's anticipate the promised greater glory of the Lord. Also, friends and family, it's Christmas season and we are also having a break starting December 7 and we will resume on January 18, 2023. We would like to extend our appreciation and gratitude for your unwavering support and with that, we are preparing for something exciting this 2023. Speaking of exciting, we are starting the year 2023 with our much anticipated prayer and fasting. This January 2 to 7 Puyana, join us for our worship services every 7 p.m. and as one man, we will worship and seek the Lord. Right now, we are just truly beyond blessed to have you with us in this journey. It was a year full of challenges, but we are filled with God's faithfulness and nothing beats that. So guys, COG fam, let us celebrate! Cheers for God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Alright, I know you're excited to worship and hear God's word, but before that, let me lead you to a prayer. Hallelujah, Panginoon, we praise you and we glorify your name. God, maraming maraming salamat po for this Sunday that you have given to us. Another Sunday to worship you, another Sunday to be reminded of your faithfulness and your blessings. God, be with us and open our hearts, our minds, and our ears to what your message is for us today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Guys, let's prepare our hearts as we listen to the message of the Lord for us today. I'll see you again later. This has been Denity. God bless everyone. Let you let me walk on the water. 
resurrected on the cross to save humanity. Oh God, you give life. You give life to the dead. You turn water into wine. Nothing is impossible for you. Oh God, you give life. Possible for you, the God of miracles. You are the God who came to miracles. Nothing is impossible as long as we believe you. You can do, you can do miracles. Our God is the God you say. You are the God who came to miracles. Nothing is impossible as long as we believe you. You can do, you can do miracles. Our God is.
Salamat Panginoon kasi alam namin nandito ka at may gagawin ka sa lugar na ito. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And let me share God's word for you in Hebrews 10, 19 to 23. It says here, And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. And by his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting Him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. So let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep His promises. Amen. God can be trusted to keep His promises. For He who promises is faithful. The God that we serve in this place, the God who promised you, is faithful to fulfill His covenant. So today, can you just lift your hands? Come on, just lift our hands today. Pwede mo makikas yung mga kamay mo sa Panginoon as we worship Him today. And just open up your mouth and worship Him. In spirit and in truth, God, we're gonna worship You today. In spirit and in truth, God, we're gonna worship You. Promises fulfilled. 
Yours is the glory. Yours is the victory. Yours is the power. And you deserve the praises of your people. So today, Church of God, can you just lift your hands and give in your best clap offering? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh God. Continue to move in this place, God. Move mightily, God. Move mightily and move powerfully in our midst today. Bless your speaker. Give him your double portion of anointing. And let every word change us from glory to glory. We love you, God. And we bring you back all the glory, praises, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas, COG fam! Here's what's happening in our church. Worshippers, we want to thank you for supporting the Revival Night for the whole year of 2022. This month of December, Revival Night will be on Christmas break. We won't be having Tuesday worship services starting on December 6th. We will resume on January 3, 2023, and together, let's anticipate the promised greater glory of the Lord. Speaking of a glorious encounter, we are starting the year 2023 with our much-anticipated prayer and fasting. This January 2-7, 2023, join us for worship services every 7 p.m. And as one man, we will worship and seek the Lord. Friends and family, it's Christmas season and we are also having a break starting on December 7th and we will resume on January 18, 2023. We would like to extend our appreciation and gratitude for your unwavering support. With that, we are preparing for something big and exciting this 2023. Calling out all J12, you are invited to J12's Christmas party happening this December 10th. This is open for all J12, even for the first timers. As we anticipate the opening of the Bethel Pastoral House, Bethel has opened its doors of opportunity for the following. For more information, visit the Bethel booth at the lobby or send us your resume to cogdasma at gmail.com. Now, for those in the sanctuary, please be reminded to switch your phones to silent mode and turn off your flash when taking photos during the service. May you be empowered as you hear the message of the Lord today. This is Jem saying God bless and enjoy the service. Amen and amen. Can we just give God our very best clap offering? It's good to be in the house of God because God's presence is here in this place. Good day to our church and welcome to our uh, service for today. And bago po tayo magpatuloy, pwede ba natin batiin muna yung katabi po natin ng Merry Christmas. Next month po, Christmas na. Next month po, December na. And Merry Christmas, everyone. At siguro po, ang bawat isa po ay may kanya-kanyang bakasyon sa Christmas break po natin. Sino po may bakasyon po for the Christmas break? Ayan, saktong-sakto bakit yung title po natin for today is Road Trip. Sino po mahilig sa road trip? Ayan, siguro po may kanya-kanya tayong road trip, punta abroad or sa province or sa manlakad natin for the Christmas break. And may you enjoy the holidays, may you enjoy the season, especially with your family. At para po tayo po ay makapahinga and be ready and prepared for what's coming in 2023. At alam niyo po, bago pa po tayo mag-holiday break, bago pa mag-road trip for December, alam niyo po, nauna na po ang Youth Empowered Philippines. At gusto ko pong ipakita po yung aming road trip po para sa inyo. Let's watch this video, please.
Doesn't it sound like it? You sing in all the There's not a voice more constant. No melodies they never see. Here I will stand in your presence. In my true identity. Doesn't it sound like it? Yeah, it sounds like just like it. is here to ready the next in line to ready the future leaders of this church to ready the young leaders to ready the youth empower you are called by God to empower people you are called by God to carry the baton the fire of COG doesn't stop here the fire of COG continues in your life in the next generation in the thousands generations to come Amen. Philippines. At tayo po, yan po yung ating COG family. And we were able to visit 27 COG churches sa uh, buong Metro Manila region. Kaya po talaga pong uh, nakakatuwa uh, na ma makapuntahan po sila ang bawat isa. At alam niyo po, ito po siguro po yung nai-imagine natin pag sinabi nating road trip. It is something fun. It is something fulfilling. It is something uh, meaningful. It is something significant. Yan po yung gusto natin ma-experience sa road trip para sa ating mga buhay. Uh, Balit ko po nasasabing road trip kasi po yung pinag-uusapan po nating Bible character po ngayon ay walang ibohin ko hindi po si Jonah. Siya din po ay may sariling road trip. Kaya lang yung road trip po ni Jonah is a very bad trip. Kaya po if you have your Bibles with you, let's open our Bibles in Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. And it says here, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So ano po makikita po natin dyan, yung road trip po ni Jonah, na stuck po siya sa loob po ng belly ng fish, three full days in that belly at wow. Ano kayang napakasamang experience, ang na-experience po ni Jonah po doon. At bakit po ba siya nandyan? Kung maalala po natin in our previous preaching last month, si Jonah po ay nandyan, bakit lumihis po siya? He went to the opposite direction ng pinapagawa ng Panginoon, kaya binagyo po siya in the middle of the sea. Kaya po siya po ay swinalo ng big fish. At kung maalala po natin, kahit hindi po magandang experience para sa kanya, still, it is God's great love for Jonah's life. Pero kung ilalagay po natin yung sarili po natin sa buhay ni Jonah, siguro matatanong din natin, bakit pa kailangan mas wallow ng big fish? Bakit pa kailangan dumaan ni Jonah dito? And siguro ikaw po na nandito po ngayon, meron ka rin sarili pinagdadaanan. And siguro yan din yung tanong natin kay Lord. Lord, what is the purpose that I am going through? All these things, all these challenges, all these test things in my life. Kaya before we proceed with God's word, let us all bow our heads and let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful Sunday. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful COG family who are here right now in our midst. And Lord God, they came here for you. They came here for your presence. They came here for your love. At naniniwala po ako, Panginoon, hindi mo sila bibiguin ngayon, Lord God. You're, you're gonna be experienced in our lives right now. Kaya today, we humbly ask for your anointing, your wisdom, and your favor, Panginoon. And right this very moment, we already claim the victory. And we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout. Amen. amen. And amen. Sige po, palakpakan po natin ang ating buhay na Diyos. And alam po, in my life in leadership, 
alam niyo po sa aking uh, continuous learning po sa leadership po natin dito sa simbahan, I found out na meron po palang road to discipline. At saktong-sakto po yan sa pinag-uusapan po natin dahil po tayo po ay may road trip at meron din pong road to discipline. At syempre po sa ating mga mentees, sa ating mga members, sa ating po mga nililid, meron po mga tao who will get it right the first time. Isang salita mo lang, isang sabi mo lang, magagawa na yung pinapagawa mo or magagawa na yung kailangan gawin. Kaya lang po minsan po hindi po nakukuhang right the first time, kaya kinakailangan po ng overload na sermon. Sino po naka-experience na po ng overload na sermon? So siguro po na-experience natin yan mula sa ating mga magulang or sa mga, mga anak po natin. Overload na sermon, halos araw-araw, minuminuto, pinapagalitan, kaya lang at the end of the day, at the end of the month, hindi pa rin po magagawa yung tama. So kung na-experience po yung sa bahay, pwede na experience sa school, sa work, pwede rin po ma-experience dito po sa church. Kaya lang po, minsan po kapag hindi na po tayo makuha sa overload na sermon, there is a price to pay. Kaya po minsan po tinatanggalan ka ng allowance. Sino po na-experience sa tanggalan ng allowance? Ako po na-experience ko po yun. Tinanggalan po ako ng allowance. Or minsan po dahil po very negative or maling-mali yung ginawa mo, meron kang penalty, meron pong charge. Kaya po minsan po libo-libo po yung mga nailalabas po nating abono or expenses. Bakit? Kasi natatawag po natin yan, charge to experience. Napakahirap po ng learning po na yun, napakahirap matuto from experience, kaya there is a price to pay. Kaya lang, pag hindi ka pa rin makuha dyan, hindi pa rin tayo makuha sa a price to pay, minsan po, downfall is needed. Kailangan kang masampulan, minsan napapahiya, minsan po talagang lalagapak to the ground, bakit po napaka-hard nung kanyang downfall, dahil kailangan siya talagang disiplinahin. At siguro po, one way or another, na-experience na po natin yan sa ating buhay. Pero minsan po, siguro po matatanong po natin, eh bakit ba kailangan pa akong dumaan sa road of discipline? Ba't kailangan pa akong disiplinahin? Hindi ba kailangan lang ay isurrender ko lang yung buhay to God's great love and everything will be all right? Hindi ba yun lang kailangan kong gawin? Pero alam niyo po, ito po yung nakikita natin sa buhay po ni Jonah. Yes, mahal siya ng Panginoon, but there is also discipline in God's great love. Amen po ba yun? There is discipline in God's great love. Hindi naman po pinangako ng Panginoon that your life will be a smooth sailing ride. Hindi pinangako ng Panginoon na hindi ka magkaka-challenges, hindi ka ma-persecute, walang disiplina ka may experience. At yun pa lang lahat na yun is part of God's great love and there is discipline in God's great love. At mas maiintindihan po natin yan kapag tayo po ay may mga anak na. Sino po dito may mga anak na? Ayan po, andaya po may mga anak na. Ako po ay may anak na rin. At alam niyo po, eh, doon po natin ma, mas mararamdaman po yan. At gusto ko po ipakita sa inyo yung itsura po ng aking anak nung first time ko po siyang pilalo. Panoorin nga muna natin si Bella. Okay. What did you say? I'm sorry. Say sorry. Sorry. Okay. What did you say? I'm sorry. Say sorry. Sorry. So, ayan po si Bella. Di ba po napaka-cute? So kahit po uh, napagalitan na, napalo na, yung iyak niya po ay eh, napakakit pa rin. Kaya ang hirap-hirap po sa magulang, no? Yung, ang hirap po sa magulang paluin yung anak, ang hirap po sa nanay or tatay disiplinahin yung anak. Kasi talagang mahal na mahal mo yung anak mo eh. Kaya lang hindi po pwedeng hindi papaluin, hindi po pwedeng hindi didisiplinahin. Bakit po? Sabi po sa Proverbs 13 verse 24, it says here, Whoever spares the rod, Whoever spares the discipline, whoever spares the pamalo, hates their children. Kapag hindi pala natin sila pinalo, hindi natin sila dinisiplina, hindi po palang totoong pagmamahal po yun. Hate pala yun na i-release natin. Bakit? Kasi someday mamumroblema sila sa buhay. Dahil hindi na nila na-experience yung tamang disiplina mula sa kanilang magulang. Kaya po, sabi dito, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Kaya kung may tunay tayong pagmamahal para sa tao, may tunay tayong pagmamahal, especially for our children, kailangan po dinidisiplina. Kaya po ako po'y naniniwala yung simbahan po na to, mahal na mahal po tayo. Amen po ba yun? Sige po, palakpangan po natin si Lord. This church loves us. Bakit? Nakakatanggap tayo dito ng rebuke, nakakatanggap tayo dito ng correction, nakakatanggap po tayo na nasisita tayo, nasisermonan from our pastors, leaders, co-leaders, co-workers, from our friends here. Kasi po, yan po yung nagpapatunay na yung simbahan na to ay may pakialam sa atin. Amen po ba yun? Yung simbahan po na to ay mahal na mahal po tayo. Kaya kung mahal tayo ng simbahan na to, all the more that we are loved by God. Mahal na mahal tayo ng Panginoon, 
Kaya po, there is discipline in God's great love. Pagmamahal pala yan ng ating Panginoon. Para sa atin, para hindi tayo mapariwara, hindi tayo mawala sa uh, pangako ng Panginoon para sa ating buhay. And truly, kapag tinignan po natin yung chapter 2, verse 1 ni Jonah, kaya po, bumalik po si Jonah, sabi dito, then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish belly. So siya po ay bumalik kay Lord, in the middle of those three days and three nights sa loob po ng belly po ng fish, siya po ay nangusap ulit kay Lord, kinausap niya si Lord, bumalik siya, nag-sorry siya, at gusto niya pong makausap ulit si Lord. Pero bago po mangyari po yan, si Jonah po ay may matinding road trip mo ng pinagdaanan. Hindi po ganun kadali na nakita ni Jonah yung kanyang pagkakamali. Kaya pag tinignan po natin yung next verse, in verse 2 it says, Then he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. Napakatindi ng pinagdaanan po ni Jonah. Napakatindi ng kanyang affliction. At ano ba tong affliction po na to? I found out na ang ibig sabihin po pala ng affliction ay, in Hebrew, ay char. Pakisabi nga sa katabi mo, char. Yan pala yun, yung sinasabi natin lagi, char. At ang ibig sabihin po pala niyan ay, you are in a tight spot. You are in distress. You are in trouble. Kaya sabi-sabi ka, char-char lang, di ba? Yung pala, problemadong problemado na yung kaibigan mo. You're in a tight spot. You're in trouble. Hindi mo na pala alam yung gagawin mo. Kaya anong gagawin mo sa char mo? Anong gagawin mo sa yung affliction? Ano ba ang pwede natin makita in our affliction? Our affliction is a sign of God's discipline. Kung titignan natin yung buhay ni Jonah, ito ay senyales na siya po ay dinidisiplina ng ating Panginoon. Kaya sana, when we are in affliction, when you are in trouble today, kapag may, may inaayos sa ating puso, sana po makita po natin na pwede tayong maging sensitive, pwede natin ma-recognize ito pala ay mula sa Panginoon, disiplina ng Panginoon kasi baka may mali sa yung puso, baka may mali sa ating mga pag-iisip, baka may mali tayong ginagawa na sa maling landas na pala tayo, binabalik lang tayo ni Lord. Or kung wala ka mang ginagawang mali ngayon, maybe God is preparing you for something bigger, something better, something beyond, something further. At gusto ka maging ready ng Panginoon for what God has for you. May plano ang Panginoon para sa atin. Sige po, palakpa nga po natin si Lord. At gano'n ba katindi yung affliction ni Jonah? Pag tinignan po natin yung next verse, sabi po dito, Out of the belly of Sheol, I cried. At na-curious po ko sa belly of Sheol. Ano ba yung Sheol? Ang ibig sabihin po pala niyan, ito na pala yung magiging grave ni Jonah. Ito na yung magiging hell ni Jonah. Ito na yung magiging pit niya. Dito na siya masastuck forever. At makikita po natin na yung big fish na nag-swallow po kay Jonah, hindi po yung naging, nag-stay lang po sa, la, sa taas. Hindi lang po siya nag-stay sa surface ng sea. Yan po ay bumaba. Kasi pag tinignan po natin yung, ver, yung next verse, Jonah was cast into the deep of the sea. Hindi po dyan tumigil. They went into the heart of the sea. Ibig sabihin sa pinakagitna at hindi pa po natapos dyan. Na experience po ni Jonah that they were surrounded by flood. At umabot sila sa billows and waves ng Panginoon. Talagang umabot si Jonah to the bottom of the sea. Yan po yung experience niya. At ang hirap-hirap makarelate po dyan kasi for sure wala pa pong na-swallow ng big fish dito. Tama po ba yun? Kahit ako po, hindi ko po na-experience yun. Hindi pa po ako nakakapunta sa pinakailalim ng ocean, ng pinakailalim ng sea. But if we will put ourselves in Jonah's shoes, siguro ma-imagine lang po natin yung sitwasyon niya. Siguro po it's full of darkness kasi sigurado po walang kuryente sa loob po ng big fish. Wala pong ila po sa pinakailalim po ng dagat. Wow! I believe Jonah was alone there. Wala po siyang kasama doon. Hindi po siya kinakausap ng big fish. Wala, siyang ma, wala po siyang masasabihin ng kanyang problema. And alam niya sa kanyang sarili, there is no more escape. Siguro unting galaw ni Jonah, baka malunok siya ng big fish. Siguro po pag naghanap siya ng lalabasan, hindi niya alam kung nasan po siya because he is disoriented. Hindi niya alam kung gano'n siya kalalim. Hindi niya alam kung saan pumunta yung isda po na yun. Kaya to top it all off, na-imagine po ba natin yung pressure po sa ilalim ng tubig? Pag tinignan po natin yung uh, may nakita kong info, ang pinakamalalim po pala na level ng sea is 10,000 meters. At sa 10,000 meters po na yun, yung pressure po doon, it can crush a submarine. Ganun po katindi yung pressure, kaya hindi ko po alam paano po, paano po nag-survive si Jonah dyan. Ganun po katremendous yung fear ni Jonah. Kasi alam niya, wala na po makakakita sa kanya dyan. 
For three days and three nights na nawawala siya, alam niya, nakalimutan na siya ng tao. Wala nang maghahanap sa kanya. Ganyan katindi yung pit ni Jonah. Ito ang kanyang grave, ito yung kanyang hell, ito yung kanyang Sheol experience. Kaya today, church, ikaw ba ay nasa posisyon na ganyan? Are you in your Sheol today? Ikaw ba ay may Sheol experience ngayon? Gano ba kalalim ang lunod ng buhay mo ngayon? Gano ka ba, gano ka ba kabaon sa problema mo ngayon? Gano ka kabaon sa utang? Gano ka kabaon sa family problem? Gano ka ba kabaon sa kasalanan or sa bisyo or kung ano mang ginagawa po natin ngayon? How deep is your Sheol today? Bakit po kung gano kalalim po yan, makakarelate tayo kay Jonah kasi napakalalim ng inabot ni Jonah. Inaalala ko lang po ngayon, in my youthful days, syempre may pagkapasaway din po ako, a life full of pride at marami rin po akong maling nagawa po nun. At I had a taste of this Sheol experience na dahil sa aking mga maling nagawa, na-experience ko na nawala yung tiwala ng tao sa akin. Nasaktan ko yung ibang tao, nasaktan ko pati yung pamilya ko. At yung alam mo yun, yung meron kapag may mali ka kasing nagawa, alam mo yung hiyay. Meron kang guilty feeling sa loob mo, nahihiya ka pumunta sa church. Pupunta ka man sa church, gusto mo yung walang makakakita sa'yo, kaya doon ka sa first service, o kaya sa last service, para hindi ka makita ng friends mo. Yun po yung guilty feeling, yun po yung Sheol experience. And siguro ikaw ay nasa Sheol ng buhay mo ngayon. At sino po gusto makawala sa problema ng buhay niya ngayon? Amen. Gusto natin makawala, gusto natin makaalis, gusto po natin mag- makaahon sa pagkalubog natin, gusto natin makaahon sa pagkalunod natin. At ano bang kailangan natin makita para makaalis tayo dito? Ano po yun? Ito po yan. You must have a realization. Yan ang kailangan natin. Yan ang hinahanap ng Panginoon para sa ating buhay, para makaalis tayo sa ating grave, para makaalis tayo sa ating pit. You must have a realization for you to get out from your mess at hindi na umulit, ulit, ulit, ulit yung problema mo sa iyong buhay. And we want that. Jonah wanted that. Kaya ito po yung nakakatuwa sa Panginoon. Ito na yung sitwasyon po ni Jonah na sa pinakailalim siya. Alam niyang wala na makakarinig sa kanya, wala na makakahanap sa kanya. Pero yung point na may na-realize siya, yung point na siya po ay bumalik kay Lord, siya ay tumawag kay Lord, ano pong ginawa ng ating buhay na Diyos? Sa point na wala na makakaalala sa'yo, wala na makakakita sa'yo, wala na makakarinig sa'yo, yung Panginoon mo sumasagot pa rin sa tawag ng buhay mo ngayon. Amen po ba yun? God answered Jonah. He heard the voice of Jonah's cry kahit malayo-malayo na siya. Kaya yan po yung ating buhay na Diyos. Ganyan po kabuti yung ating Diyos kahit suktula na yung nagawa natin sa buhay, kahit sinagad na natin yung disiplina ng Panginoon. Kapag tayo ay lumapit sa Kanya, He still hears our prayers. Amen po ba yan? Wala pa natin si Lord. Kaya ano po yung tindi ng realization ni Jonah? Sabi po sa verse 4, Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Totoo naman. Talagang inilubog siya sa pinakailalim ng sea. Wala na makakakita sa kanya doon. Wala na makakarinig sa kanya doon. At ano po yung experience niyan? Ito po yung experience na nawala na sa yung tiwala ng tao. Wala na sa yung pabor ng Panginoon. Wala na sa yung anointing. Wala ka ng wisdom. Hindi mo namin gagawin sa buhay mo. You simply lost the presence of God in your life. Ewan ko po na experience na po yun. Pero napakahirap na experience po yun to be lost. To be far away from God's presence. At ganun katindi ang affliction ni Jonah. Pero ano po sabi niya? Yet, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. With God's grace, makakalapit siya ulit kay Lord. With God's grace, makikita niya ulit ang Panginoon. With God's grace, makakasama niyo ulit ang Panginoon. And that's what God's grace does for you. God's grace gets you out from your grave. Amen po ba yun? Sige, wapala pa nga po natin si Lord. God's grace gets me out from my grave. Napakabuti ng Panginoon. Napakagracious ng Panginoon para sa ating buhay. Hindi lang po yun. In verse 6 it says, Yes, I went down to the moorings of the mountains. 
At ito po ay new word para sa akin yung moorings. At ang ibig sabihin po pala niyan, it is the foundation of the mountain. Hindi po yan yung paan ng bundok. Yung paan ng bundok, nakikita po natin yan. Pero yung moorings, ito po yung pinaka-pinaka ilalim ng bundok. I believe nakadikit po yun sa crust ng mundo. Kaya po ganun po kalalim yung inabot ni Jonah. Ganun po ka-deep yung kanyang downfall. Ganun kabagsak si Jonah, umabot siya sa pinaka-ilalim ng dagat. Kaya sabi nga po dito, ito yung narealize niya, the earth with its bars close behind me forever. Alam niya, his story is about to end. Alam ni Jonah, katapusan na ng kanyang buhay. Alam ni Jonah, wala na siyang pag-asa. Tanggap na ni Jonah, patapon siya. Wala nang pupuntahan yung kanyang buhay. But in the next phrase, it says, yet. Pakisabi nga po yun, yet. Yet, you have brought my life from the pit. Oh Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Sige, palakpan natin si Lord. Yet, yes, patapos na yung buhay mo. Patapon na yung buhay natin. Yes, wala na tayong pag-asa. Yet, with God's mercy, God's mercy changes the ending of your story today. Amen po ba yun? Sige, palakpan natin si Lord. Yung akala mo wala ka ng pag-asa. Yung akala mo wala ka ng pupuntahan. Yung alam mo, napaka-deep ng pagkabagsak mo. Alam mo, napaka-tindi ng pagkakamali mo. Yes. But wow. With God's mercy, He changes the ending of your story today. At yan po yung na-experience po ni Jonah. Kaya po sabi in verse 10, it says here, So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. And yes, Dahil po bumalik po siya kay Lord, may na-realize po siya, nakatungtong na naman po siya sa lupa. Siya po ay makakabalik sa kanyang road trip. Niluwa po siya ng big fish dahil po inutos po yun ng Panginoon. Wow! Kaya ano po makikita po natin sa buhay po ni Jonah? What a road trip! Lumihis ka sa Panginoon, binagyo ka ng panahon, sinalo ka ng isang big fish, pumunta ka sa pinakailalim ng dagat, Tinawag mo ang Panginoon, umakit ka ulit, at nandito ka naman. You're back on track. Wow! What a road trip. Amen po ba yan? What a road trip for Jonah's life. At bakit po ganyan? Just to let Jonah realize something. May pinaparealize nang ang Panginoon kay Jonah, kaya hinayaan niyang pagdaanan yung lahat ni Jonah. Bakit? Ano bang meron sa realization but ba kailangan tayo may ma-realize because realization drives you to a life-changing experience. Amen? Iwa pala pa natin si Lord. Kaya ayaw kang pakawalan ng Panginoon. Kaya ayaw ni Lord tumigil sa kanyang disiplina hanggat hindi mo nare-realize yung pagkakamali mo. Bakit? Kasi ang kasunod nun, pag may na-realize ka na, it's a life-changing experience. Yung mga mali mo noon, hindi mo na ulit mauulit ngayon. Kasi na-realize mo na ako anong dapat mong gawin. Through God's love. Ganyan kakamahal ng Panginoon ngayon. Amen po ba yung church? Sige pa pala natin si Lord. At alam niyo po ngayon, meron po akong bisita. At gusto ko pong tawagin si Brother Lerick. Uh, good friend of mine. And uh, tagal na po kami magkasama sa ministry. 15 years dito po sa COG. At gusto niya pong ibahagi kung paano po siya binago ng Panginoon. Thank you po, Pastor. Uh, pwede ba palakpakan natin ng Panginoon? Hallelujah. Mabuti po ang Panginoon. At uh, pakita nung ang katabi mo, anong trip mo ngayon? Uh, may kakaiba tayong mga road trip sa buhay, pero ang kakwento ko po ay ang road trip ko. Kung paano po ako dinisiplina ng Panginoon through His love. At uh, syempre ako po ay bilang kabataan noon, ako po ay nakapag-aral ng elementary. Lahat naman tayo siguro nakadaan doon. At uh, imbis na ma-enjoy ko yung buhay ko, ako po ay nabik- nabiktima ng bullying sa mga biktima po ng bullying alam niyo po ito po yung epekto pagdating, pagdating ko ng high school dala ko po yun at uh, hinalap yung sarili ko na kailangan ko ng companion kailangan ko maging matapang kailangan ko ng lakas at napatropa po ako hanggang sa yung tropa ko tropa, tropa, away, gulo dun po ko napunta at hindi lang yan nadala ko po yun sa college life ko at sa college life gusto ko maging belong Ganun pa rin, uh, dumating sa point na yung away ko ay hindi na naging normal. Ako po ay 
na suspend sa school. Muntik mga kick out. Muntik na ako makulong. Nagkaroon ako ng kaso na attempted homicide dahil sa away. At nung time na yon nahihirapan ako kasi pinag-aral ako ng magulang ko para maging maganda ang buhay ko. Pero hindi ganun ang nangyari. At dito po ako napasok sa pagbabanda. Gusto ko ng companion. Ganyan po yung tsura ko. At mukha ba yung katiwatiwala? Di ba hindi? Ako po ay nalulong sa iba't ibang klase ng bisyo. At hindi lang po yun, na-involved sa drugs. Lahat na. Talaga pong yung, yung road trip ko ay palalim. Pailalim lang pailalim. At hindi ko na naunawaan na nangyayari sa akin. Piling ko mag-isa ako at hindi lang yun, naghanap ako ng mga kasama ko sa buhay. Ako po ay nagkaroon ng live-in partner. At alam niyo naman, kapag ka lubog sa immorality, kami po ay nagkaroon ng anak. At sad to say, nung time na yon nag-aaral siya, ako wala naman, saan ko dadalhin yun? At kami po ay nagde-decide. At sa dulo po, Nag-decide kami na magpa-abort. At di ko alam kung anong gagawin ko. Depress ako. So, try ko na magpakamatay. Las-las ako. Tatry kong tumalun sa third floor kasi gulong-gulo na ako. Di ko alam. Napapagod ako. Napapagod na ako sa buhay ko. At dahil puno ako ng vices, pumunta ako sa mga tropa ko. Inom kami. Here comes the grace of God. Pinag-share sa akin sa inuman. Alam mo dya, hindi ko lang paano encourage yung tropa. Gusto ko sila ma-encourage kaso hindi ko kabisado yung Bible. Yung Bible na pinangbabalit ko ng marijuana, pinupunit. Sabi ko, parang kailangan ko yun. May narealize ako, punta ako sa iba't ibang klaseng simbahan. Ba't ganun? Wala akong kapayapaan. Wala akong marealize na talaga. Ano bang gagawin ko? Then, one time, Salamat sa magulang ko, in-invite ako sa simbahan. Sa simbahan na pinuntahan ko, dito yon Isa ako sa nakaupo dyan. At pagpasok ko, saya. Wow, ang ganda naman sa simbahan na to. May banda ulit. Tugtugan. Tapos, ang saya-saya ng tao. Ba't ganun nung slow na yung song umiiyak? Sabi ko, parang mali na pasukan ko. Mga baliw yata yung tao dito. Nagahanap ako ng kabayapaan. Ito yung nakikita ko. Pero, nag-strike sa akin nung may nakatayo dito. Ah... Uh, Pastor pala yung tawag doon, hindi ko nga alam kung sino yun. Sabi niya, ikaw ba yung kabataan na wala ka ng pangarap sa buhay mo? Sabi ko, ako yun ah. Nakinig ako, sabi niya, kung wala ka ng plano sa buhay mo, ako may plano para sa'yo. Dahil mahal kita. May plano akong maganda para sa'yo. Praise the Lord. Sabi ko, kailangan ko yun. Sabi ko, I cannot really do it on my own. I need Jesus in my life. At sinurender ko lahat sa Kanya, binigay ko. At praise the Lord kasi binago niyo yung buhay ko ngayon. Wala na akong bisyo, wala lang kahit ano. At nagkaroon po ng ministeryo, ang crusade ministry, kami po ay umaabot sa mga kabataan na ganito yung dinadaanan. Baka po yung mga anak natin, ganito yung dinadaanan. Naintindihan ko po sila. Sana maintindihan niyo kami. Sila ay isa rin sa mga nalulunod. At sa paglilingkod ko, yung kalibin ko, hindi ko nakatuluyan. Binigyan ako ng Panginoon ng mapapangasawa at nagkaroon na po ko ng asawa ngayon. Isa lang po yung asawa ko. Kasama ko po siyang maglingkod sa Panginoon. At ngayon po nakapagbahagi na ako ng salita ng Panginoon. Kasi ganun po kalawak yung mercy, yung grace ni Lord. Para abutin ako. At hindi pa huli ang lahat. Aabutin ka rin niya. To God be the glory. Amen. So, yeah, well, let's give God our very best clap offering. Hallelujah. Ito po ang buhay po ni Brother Lerick. At isa na po siya sa mga leaders po ng ating simbahan po ngayon. Siya po yung may hawak ng crusade ministry. And siguro po maraya po nakaka-relate kay Brother Lerick ngayon. Nagaling po sa patapo na buhay, mabisyong buhay. At kung anong pwedeng masubukan sa mundo, susubukan. Kaya siguro ikaw rin yung tao po ngayon na sa tingin mo wala ka ng pag-asa. Wala ka nang pupuntahan. Wala ka nang chance. Pero gustong iparealize sa iyo ng Panginoon 
God's grace and mercy is abundant for your life right now. Yes, alam ni Lord, nakailang hingi ka na ng second chance. Hindi na nga second chance, eh. sa sobrang dami ng chance. Eh. Pero ngayon, pag humingi ka pa rin kay Lord ng Lord, sa pang chance. Sa pang chance para magbago. Isa pang chance, Lord God, para ayusin ko yung buhay ko. Isa pang chance, Lord God, para ayusin ko yung ginagawa ko dito sa church. Pag hiningi mo ngayon yan, kapatid, ibibigay pa rin yan ng Panginoon para sa iyo. Kaya ngayon, church, meron mong pinaparealize ang Panginoon sa buhay mo yan. Meron ba siyang pinaparealize in your life right now in this very, serv- in this very service? At sana po hindi po natin mamiss yan kasi ang Panginoon ay nandito ngayon at kayang-kaya niya baguhin yung buhay mo at yung mga dati mong pagkakamali pwedeng matigil na mula sa araw na to. Amen po ba yun? Sige po palakpakan natin si Lord. Kaya ngayon church, gusto mo ba ulit ma-experience yung grace and mercy ng Panginoon for your life? Kung ikaw po ngayon yan, pwede ka ba tumayo from your seats? And here we are, oh Lord. Lord God, we're here right now all because of your grace and mercy. Wala kami pagmamalaki, wala kami pagyayabang sa lahat ng aming ginagawa because all these things is all because of your grace and mercy. And here we are once again coming back to you, calling unto you, Jesus. Here are your people right now who will say, Lord, Hindi ko na kaya. Pagod na ako. Pagod na ako sa bisyo. Pagod na ako sa walang pagbabago. Pagod na ako sa paulit-ulit na problema. Paulit-ulit na mali. Kaya ngayon, Lord God, here we are. Gusto lang namin sabihin, we need you, Jesus. Kung ikaw ngayon yun, ngayon yun church, pwede ba natin itas yung kamay natin kung sinasabi mo, I need you, Jesus. Here we are, Lord Jesus. And today, church, as you raise up your hands to the Lord, let's worship God from our hearts through this song. I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? There's no I am sad Capture me with grace I need you, Jesus To come to my rescue Where else can I go? There's no
Church, can we raise up our hands to Jesus and join me in this prayer? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, here I am again. Here I am again. Surrendering my life to you. Surrendering my life to you. Today, Lord Jesus. Today, Lord Jesus. With all my heart. With all my heart. With full sincerity. With full sincerity. I surrender all. I surrender all. To you, Jesus. To you, Jesus. All my pain, all my pain, all my hurt, all my hurt, all my mistakes, all my mistakes, all my failures, all my failures, all my problems, all my problems, all my affliction, all my affliction. I surrender. I surrender. Here is my life, Lord. Here is my life, Lord. And today, O oh God. And today, O oh God. Once more. Once more. I ask. I ask. Give me another chance. Give me another chance. I want to change. I want to change. I want a life-changing experience. I want a life-changing experience. And I, and I cannot do it. Cannot do it on my own. On my own. I need your help. I need your help. Jesus. Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. In my life. In my life. So that my life. So that my life will never. Will never. Be the same again. Be the same again. Pwede ba natin palakpan ng Panginoon? Today, you have another chance. Another chance to make a difference. Another chance for a life-changing experience. And you have it today. All because of God's grace and mercy. Sige po, palakpan natin si Lord. His grace and mercy is abundant for your life. Kaya iingatan po natin yan, iba-value po natin yan, dahil malaki pa ang plano ng Panginoon para sa buhay mo ngayon. Amen po yan. At today, church, before we leave this place, can we lift up our tithes in offering to God? At Panginoon, as we lift up our tithes in offering, Lord God, kung ang problema namin ay pera, in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke it. We rebuke the spirit of money in our lives. We rebuke the spirit of pride and greed in our lives. Lord God, hindi ang buhay namin ang susunod sa pera. Lord God, pera ang susunod sa aming buhay. Dahil gagamitin namin to, Lord God, to advance your kingdom. Gagamitin namin to, Lord God, to make you more glorious, Lord God, in this place. Kaya Panginoon, use this tithes and offering, Lord God, to save more souls for you, Jesus, and accept it as a pleasing aroma a pleasing worship for you. And today, here we are, Lord God, once again, we have another chance. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, na pinatawad mo kami. Thank you, Lord God, na pinakingga mo na naman kami. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, at nakalapit na naman kami sa yung presensya, Painon. All because of your grace and mercy. Kaya, Lord God, wag mo nahayama, wala pa yung chance na to sa amin, yung opportunity na to. Lord God, we claim and believe and declare our lives will never be the same again from this day forward. Hallelujah. Kaya Panginoon, I pronounce your blessing upon your people. Lord God, pour out your anointing, pour out your wisdom, your favor. Let your double portion of anointing be experienced by their lives. Lord God, protect their lives. Lord God, wag mo hayaman na nakaw na naman sila ng kaaway. Lord God, provide for their every need, Panginoon. Kaya today, Panginoon, we already claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody shout! Amen! Amen. Amen. Hello, 
again, COG fam. Thank you very much for being part of our Sunday worship service. We hope that you had an amazing and intimate time with the Lord. There is power in embracing God's revelation. Kaya, alam nyo guys, we hope this made an impact to your heart and soul. Keep seeking and you will find Him. And we just want to praise the Lord for this opportunity to gather even online. Ang saya-saya kasi, syempre, meron tayong technology and we are so excited for more na blessings say Lord. So, keep sharing the good news, guys. And if you want to know more about the happenings here at COG, check out our Instagram and Facebook at COG Dasma and COG WMPH. Also, if you want to take your next steps from joining a ministry to growing in your faith or connecting to a group, just type in, in our comment section, Next Step, and our online team will get in touch with you. Or if you need counseling and prayer naman, our COG Lifeline counselors are ready to welcome you. Just type in prayers at the comment section and we'll connect you to the team. That's it for today, COG fam. Merry Christmas to you guys. And we love you all. This is Tenerine. God bless you and we'll see you again next Sunday. We love you, COG fam. Bye-bye. ready the next in line to ready the future leaders of this church to ready the young leaders to ready the youth empower you are called by God to empower people you are called by God to carry the baton the fire of COG doesn't stop here the fire of COG continues in your life in the next generation in the thousands of generations to come Amen.
Oh, 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 oh,